Commerce, trade, and even defense work all are flourishing between Israel and its Arab neighbors who are part of the Abraham Accords. This historic alliance is now 14 months old and the progress it's created is dramatic. The big question, will the largest and most powerful Arab nation join in? Chris Mistral has the latest from Jerusalem. In one of the latest signs of cooperation, Israel and the United Arab Emirates signed a joint venture to send an unmanned vehicle to the moon by 2024. That followed a surprise visit last month during a multinational military exercise when the commander of the UAE Air Force met with his Israeli counterpart. And on the commercial front, this Israeli expo in Dubai is another sign of success resulting from the historic peace agreement. It's been amazing, the progress. We're watching business deals to be developed, tourism deals. We're seeing the Jerusalem Post uh, forming uh, a media alliance with, a, with an Emirati uh, you know, newspaper and uh, TV company. We're seeing Israeli airlines open up direct routes to Arab countries, UAE, Bahrain, Morocco. We're seeing Moroccan and Emirati and Bahraini airlines flying direct routes into Israel. Best-selling author Joel Rosenberg chronicles the creation and progress of the Accords in his latest book, Enemies and Allies. CBN News has followed Rosenberg as he's organized delegations of evangelical leaders to meet with Arab heads of state. I've sat with them, I've listened to them, both before the Abraham Accords and now that it's open. And they, the, the Arab leaders are very, very excited. Not just what's happening in the last year and a few months, but where this is going. One of the agreement's architects, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo tells CBN News he sees a bright future for the Abraham Accords. I think this changed history. I don't think it's going to go back. I think the people of these nations can see that this is the rightful Jewish homeland. It ought to be recognized as such. It's not good foreign policy to have the destruction of Israel at the center of how you think about the world. The commerce, the trade, the defense work that will be done between these nations will create prosperity for people in every one of them. And I think that's why ultimately there will be many other nations that will see this as both right and righteous. Here in Israel, what began under the Netanyahu government is continuing with the aggressive pursuit by the coalition of Prime Minister Neftali Bennett. Still, a lingering concern here is whether the Biden administration will invest the political capital and diplomatic muscle to advance the accords. This recent trilateral meeting between the U.S., UAE and Israel, led by Secretary of State Antony Blinken, suggests a positive direction. Today, our three countries discussed two new working groups that we are launching uh, together. Uh, the first is on religious coexistence. Um, this is a moment of rising anti-Semitism, rising Islamophobia, and we want Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States to work together to build tolerance and ensure that all religious groups can worship in their traditional ways without violence, without intimidation, without discrimination. Another remaining question one year into the Accords is will Saudi Arabia, the largest and most influential Sunni Arab nation, take steps to join. The short version is I believe the Saudis are weighing right now at the highest levels. Is it in their national interests to make peace with Israel? It is saying both publicly and privately the Saudis are moving towards normalization. But they're not there yet. I think there's going to be a lot of reporting we still need to do. But when that happens, if it happens, I think it will. My prediction on CBN News is I think the Saudis are going to make that decision that it is in their national interest. Overshadowing the success of any peace effort remains the specter of a nuclear Iran. In just weeks, the U.S. and other nations that signed the original Iranian nuclear deal are scheduled to resume negotiations. It was a bad deal six years ago. It is a bad deal today. I hope the U.S. will not make that mistake again. And look what happened in the last six years. They enriched more uranium, they developed the ballistic missile technology, they're sending billions of dollars to their proxies. It will be a major mistake if the U.S. and the P5 will actually join this agreement. You not only have the Iran threat, but Iran forming an alliance with Russia and Turkey and North Korea and China. So that's the darkness to the east. 
and the north, and then we have all this light here and to the west. And so, to use a weather analogy, those are two building fronts, and there's always the danger that when those two fronts meet, there's going to be a storm. From most accounts, the report card on one year of the Abraham Accords reflects a substantial transformation in the region. While the signing members seem resilient, it's almost certain Middle East opponents of these agreements will test their resolve. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. It would be absolutely wonderful if Saudi Arabia joined in with it. And uh, I'll add to the prediction that you just heard from Joel Rosenberg. This is what Scripture says, that Israel will dwell at peace with all of its neighbors. So Saudi Arabia joining in, uh, there's already a peace agreement with Egypt. There's already a peace agreement with Jordan. Uh, so will, will Saudi Arabia join in with UA, UAE, Bahrain, these other Arab nations to say, let's come together. Uh, let's see what can happen when we give up our central ideology that Israel has to be driven into the sea. We welcome the Jews into the Middle East. This is their ancestral homeland. They have a right to be here. What a wonderful thing. Uh, now, if we can only add Lebanon and Syria to that mix, uh, then the prophecy is fulfilled and, and wonderful things. That, that would be absolutely fantastic to see. This would also isolate the Palestinians. Uh, and would they give up their goal of driving Israel to the sea? And would they finally come to peace and say, we recognize Israel's right to exist. We give up our goal of driving them out. We give up terrorism as a tactic, and we want to have peace uh, with the Jews. That would be absolutely incredible.